Hello everyone, my name is Olu Martins and today's message is on God's glory. God's glory. Did you know that the reason why you and I are here on earth is to glorify God? Did you also know that everything else on earth is to do the same thing, which is to glorify God? See, Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says, all things were created by him, for him, and through him. And in him, all things exist. So all things were created by him, through him, for him, in him. Everything exists. And so this means that we exist because of him. And we exist to honor him, to glorify him. We exist to do that, to glorify him. See, that word glory means so many things. I was checking and doing a research on the word glory and I found 20 different meanings to the word glory. Some of the meanings are honor. Some of the meaning, it also means to, glory, uh, to exalt. Uh, glory also means to beautify. Glory also means to magnify. So glory has many, many different meanings. Um, a simple meaning for you and I may be this. Glory means to make God look good. To make God look good. I think, I think that that may work for us to simplify that meaning of glory and just make it in this, just say it in this little, little words, to make God look good. So glory means to make God look good. Well, um, there are many things that God has created that speak to that truth. Stars are created to make God look good. When we look at stars, we glorify God because stars make God look good. The mountains, the oceans, the planets, everything that we see, everything created by God, make God look good. Most importantly, we humans are supposed to be able, we're supposed, we're made, we're created to make God look good. We're supposed to make God look good. See, that is why the Bible says that God will not share his glory with another. He will not share his glory, his beauty, his honor with another. In the book of Acts, King Herod found this out. Unfortunately, by the time he found this out, it was too late. See, there were people coming over to King Herod and they were praising him. In fact, they called him a god. And he took the glory, the Bible says, unto himself. He took that praise and that glory and that honor unto himself. God was displeased. He sent an angel from heaven to kill him. And the Bible says that King Herod died and his body was just full of worms. It was rotten. It was bad. See, this is for our instruction. If you have ever felt that you wanted to take on God's glory unto yourself, you are forewarned. It may be to your demise. And so it's very important to realize that God does not share his glory with anybody. He doesn't want to share his glory with anybody. It's all for him. It's all for him. It's all for him. Why? Because everything was created by him, through him, and for him, and in him all things exist. Well, if we know that the word glory means to make God look good, well, it also means that we can make God look bad. Not only can we make God look good, we can also make him look bad. So what we want to do today is look at ways where, two ways. Number one, how do we make God look good? How do we make God look good? 
Well, several ways. Firstly, we make him look good in our conduct, by our conduct. See, Jesus says that you will know them by their fruit, which essentially means you will know them by their conduct, by their conduct. So we can make God look good by our conduct. For example, um, in the book of Acts, Stephen, who was um, appointed uh, one of the, um, uh, he, he was one of the uh, 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 disciples of Jesus Christ that came after the day of Pentecost, as he was speaking, and the Holy Ghost, he was in the Holy Ghost. So as he was speaking, he was speaking some very, very hard truths. He essentially was telling the Jews that they were responsible for um, killing Jesus Christ. And so they got inflamed, they got infuriated, and they started to stone him. And in the moment that Stephen was dying, he said, Lord, forgive them. Lord, forgive them. Boy, this is how you make God look good. Stephen made God look good. He glorified God even while he was being stoned to death. And so by our conduct, we can glorify God. That is one way. Another way that we can glorify God is by our faith, by our faith. King Hezekiah is a good example in the Bible. King Hezekiah in the book of Isaiah uh, faced an enemy. Sennacherib. Sennacherib had um, conquered many nations. And so Sennacherib sent um, uh, messengers to King Hezekiah telling him that you are next. You are next. We're coming to get you. So what did Hezekiah do? He went on his knees and he prayed. See, he knew that there was nothing humanly that he could do. And so he prayed to the God, the helper of the helpless. God answered his prayer. At the end of the story, 185,000 men were killed by the angels of God. Hezekiah had faith that God could do it. He called on the name of the Lord. That is one way also to glorify God. We glorify him by our faith by our faith. Hezekiah proved this. You and I also need to prove that in our own lives. We need to glorify God by our faith. Number three, you can also glorify God in your trials, in your trials. See, the apostle Paul had many trials. Uh, people disliked him. He was stoned. He was beaten. Uh, 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 he, he, he was shipwrecked. In met all those instances, he never departed from his faith. So in all of his trials, he glorified God. In his trials, he glorified God. He made God look good. He did not step away from his faith. He did not step away from, from proclaiming the name of Christ. So in his trials, being in prison so many times. In fact, he wrote many of the epistles in prison. So even when he faced severe trials, he glorified God. See, you and I have to learn to do the same. As we face trials, we need to glorify God. We need to make God look good in our trials. See, that way the unbelieving uh, world will look at us and say, wow, how come they're looking good when everything seems to be going against them? See, this is how you glorify God. You glorify him in your trials. Another way that we can glorify God is by our testimony. See, we are called to share our testimony. We are called to be witnesses. We are witnesses to the Most High. And the way that we witness is by testifying. We testify about what the Lord has done for us. See, in that way, others are encouraged and the name of God is glorified. 
See, unfortunately, in our world today, we testify to our own strength. We testify to our own skills. We testify to our own uh, power. We testify to our own uh, uh, prosperity. See, all these things are wrong. We are meant to glorify God in everything. And so by our testimony, by our testimony, we can glorify God. We can make him look good. We can make him look beautiful. We can honor his name by our testimony. Another way that we uh, make God look good is in our prosperity, in our prosperity. See, many people dishonor God. As, as, as soon as they are prosperous, they start to move away from God. They start to move towards worldly things. They start to show their prosperity in other ways. Instead of committing to the word, uh, to the um, uh, work of God, they don't. They don't do that. See, that's not how we are supposed to do. We are supposed to glorify God in our prosperity. See, how do we do that? We do that by uh, sharing our prosperity, by uh, putting our prosperity to work in God's kingdom by by committing our funds to things of God things that will glorify God this is how we glorify him in our prosperity and when people ask us wow how did we become prosperous there's only one answer Jesus Christ Jesus did it Jesus did it and I give all glory to him see that is how we make God look good. That's how you and I can make God look good. My friends, there is another side. Unfortunately, sadly, we can also make God look bad. We can make him look bad in several ways, in several ways. One of the ways that we can make God look bad is also by our conduct. In the book of Samuel, we learn about the sons of Eli. Eli was a prophet. In fact, he was the one that the prophet Samuel was sent to. Eli had two sons. These boys were reckless. They were reckless. They messed around with women. They stole money. They did things that were not worthy of people that are called the children of God. They dishonored God in their conduct, and God dishonored them. In fact, they were killed. They died early. God killed them. God killed them. Why? Because they dishonored God by their conduct. Again, this story is for our own instruction. If you see yourself, if you find yourself, dishonoring God in your conduct. Be careful. Be very careful. The words in the Bible are for our, our instruction. See, we are not different from everybody else. God is not partial. One way that we can dishonor God is in our conduct. We can make him look bad by our conduct. Another way that we can dishonor God is by the uh, by our unbelief, by our unbelief. See, the people of Israel found this out. God had promised them that He was going to give them a land called Canaan, and there were thousands of them that did not believe the word of God. Unfortunately, over six thousand of them perished. They did not see the promised land. They didn't see it, the word of God said, because they did not believe. They didn't see it due to their unbelief. One way we can make God look bad is by our unbelief. By our unbelief. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. If you have a spirit of unbelief, you need to get on your knees. You need to repent. You need to tell God that you, you have a spirit of unbelief and he will help you. He will help you.
The number three way that we dishonor God and don't glorify him is through unforgiveness. An unforgiving spirit is one way, is one of the biggest ways that we dishonor God. See, God gave us everything. When God in Jesus Christ shed his blood, he gave us everything. See, that way, no matter what we do, when we go to the Lord and we ask for repentance and we sincerely do that, the blood of Jesus would cleanse away all our sins. See, if Hitler had gone to the Lord in repentance, the Lord would have forgiven him. So this blood of Jesus is so huge. So if God can give us everything, and if we go into repentance and confession, and the Lord can forgive us for anything, why can't we forgive each other? Why can't we forgive each other? See, this spirit of unforgiveness is one huge way that we dishonor God. We cannot continue to be unforgiven to those that have hurt us. We need to forgive. We need to forgive. Unforgiveness is one way that we dishonor God. It is one way that we make him look bad. Another way that we make God look bad is in our pride. See, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon found this out. See, he didn't realize that it was God that gave him everything he had. God gave him his mighty kingdom, his mighty army, the intellect, and all the prosperity around him. See, God gave it to him. But Nebuchadnezzar did not realize and did not acknowledge God that gave him everything. He was proud. God punished him. For seven years, he was insane like a wild beast in the forest. That was his punishment. See, that story is not just written as a tale just to read and forget. See, that story is for our instruction. If you sense a spirit of pride rising up in you, perhaps you are now very prosperous. Perhaps you are now very wealthy. Perhaps you have a brilliant mind. Perhaps you have great gifts. You must remember, it is the Lord that has given it all to you. And remember these words. It is the Lord that giveth. It is also the Lord that taketh away. So the spirit of pride must be rebuked and must be rejected. Do not dishonor the name of God by being prideful. God created you. God gave you everything. He can also take it away. This is a word of warning to the proud. God can also take it away. Remember the words in the book of Peter that says, God uh, exalts the humble, but he dishonors the proud. God raises the humble and he brings down the proud. If you are proud, remember these words. If you do not repent, God will bring you down. He will bring you down. This is one way that we can dishonor God. Another way that we dishonor God is through our many sins, sins of disobedience, sins of um, rebellion. We dishonor God every time we're sinful. In fact, we are a poor testimony because other people, pagans, look at us and say, wow, and these people call themselves Christians? How can they live like pagans and call themselves Christians? See, we can make God look bad by our sins. We need to be careful. We need to repent. We need to acknowledge. We need to know this, that we can dishonor God by our sins. We need to be careful. We need to be mindful of these things. See, not only... As I said, can we make God look good by glorifying his name, by, you know, uh, conduct, conducting ourselves uh, in a manner that is worthy of those that are called children of God. We can also, by the same token, dishonor God by our conduct, the way we act. We must be careful of these things and we must be 
mindful of these things. In conclusion, in conclusion, how can we, if we really want to glorify God, who can we look to as a model, as an example? Well, the Bible points us to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, in all the years that he spent on earth, spent it glorifying him. When you read the book of John, it talks so many ways about how Jesus glorified the Father. In fact, Jesus said, I have come, Father, to glorify you, and I have done everything. To glorify you. In the book, same book of John, in chapter 7, 17, Jesus says, Father, glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. In other words, here's what this means for you and I today. Here's what that means. Father, we will honor you that you may honor us. See, God glorifies those that glorify him. See, God makes beautiful those that make him look beautiful. See, God exalts those that exalt God. See, God honors those that honor him. God magnifies those that magnify him. God increases those that increase him. We must know this. We must know this. So, in everything we do, the Apostle Paul says, whatever we do, whether we are eating, whether we are drinking, in whatever we do, the Apostle Paul says, we must glorify Him. We must glorify Him. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our exaltation. He is worthy of our exaltation. He is worthy of Everything. He is worthy of everything. Let me end with this Pentecostal song that speaks to this message. It goes like this. All the glory must be unto the Lord. For he is worthy of a praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be, all the glory must be, for all the glory must be unto the Lord. One more time. All the glory must be unto the Lord, for he is worthy of a praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be, and all the glory must be, all the glory must be unto the Lord. You must remember this in whatever you do, whatever you do, you must strive to make the Lord look good. You must glorify Him in everything that you do. And my friend, the Lord Himself will glorify you as well. I want to thank you today for joining me. I pray that this message has been inspirational to you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take this message, immerse it in your spirit, that you may start glorifying God in everything from today onwards, in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Be blessed in Jesus' name.